without further ado, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, well, as uh, Anu has uh, told you, my name is uh, Jesus Rodriguez. And um, this uh, seminar is going to be uh, about uh, blockchain, uh, smart grids, and uh, how they can be used to meet uh, sustainable development goals. Um, the um, topics that we're going to be um, uh, seeing and um, talking about are, um, well, I think that you are quite familiar with them. So uh, they should come maybe not as much of uh, novelty separately, but uh, the combination and the merge of them is uh, the aspect that uh, comes as most interesting from my point of view. So I'll be just providing um, a short introduction to uh, blockchain, uh, another introduction to um, sustainable development goals, uh, and how blockchain can be uh, used to uh, aid in their uh, fulfillment, uh, an introduction on the smart grids, and uh, synergies about uh, all these um, different technologies and uh, aspects. Okay, so uh, as for the introduction of, uh, to blockchain, um, well, there are many ways that uh, blockchain has been uh, defined. Uh, the one that I'll find uh, more appealing is uh, the one that you can see here. Uh, there uh, you have the source that talks about uh, how blockchain is uh, a new technology, or at least it was newer in uh, 2018, where um, the reference um, was, uh, was first uh, published. A new technology that integrates uh, decentralization, distributed computation, asymmetric encryption, timestamp, consensus algorithms, etc. Um, so the first time that I saw this uh, definition, I thought, okay, right, blah, 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 mambo jumbo, lots of buzzwords that don't mean uh, anything. But in fact, they do. This is uh, quite a good definition because um, all the um, aspects that are mentioned here are indeed true. Uh, it integrates decentralization. It certainly has uh, distributed computation. Uh, asymmetric encryption and um, security uh, features in general are uh, of critical importance. Uh, Timestamps are used uh, for um, um, data transfers. And consensus algorithms are uh, of major importance uh, here as well. Um, in a more utilitarian manner, we could say that blockchain uh, is uh, well, a chain of blocks, of um, cryptographic blocks. Uh, they are linked uh, with each other through a piece of information obtained from the previous one. Uh, via hash or digest uh, values, or what we refer as hash uh, function uh, output. Here, um, in the right part of this slide, you can see a um, definition of um, some of the achievements of um, blockchain straight from the horse's mouth. Um, this is uh, the white paper of uh, Bitcoin, published in uh, 2008 by Satoshi Nakamoto, whoever they are. Um, their um, identity is yet to be um, uh, known where uh, it is mentioned um, how um, um, this uh, hashing and uh, these um, functions uh, can be used uh, in order to um, well, provide a summary of the data that is contained um, in one transaction and how those transactions can be linked with each other by using uh, some data from the previous uh, block. You may think that uh, the idea of uh, having a um, distributed record of uh, transactions that uh, have um, taken place um, uh, during um, a time span is something that is uh, new. And while the technology is new, uh, cryptographic uh, functions uh, were developed during the second uh, half of the 20th century, uh, the idea is not that new. In fact, uh, it exists uh, or it dates back to at least 500, 600 years. Some, even, some researchers say that uh, or claim that uh, it first uh, was recorded or there is some evidence of this um, even 2000 years ago. If you have a um, uh, look at this uh, picture here, you can see that this is a huge stone. Uh, you may be uh, familiar with, um, uh, with this. That is called a ray, uh, a ray stone. So um, these are, uh, were uh, stones that are, were used uh, for um, um, representation and value purpose. And as you can see, they are really, really large. The one that uh, I took from uh, Wikipedia is uh, eight feet tall. And uh, you can imagine that moving this stone around would demand a huge amount of uh, effort just to uh, place it in, um, in front of uh, someone's house to say, hey, this is uh, my stone, I'm rich. So rather than moving around the stone, there was um, an oral tradition of uh, about um, who that the stone belonged to. Uh, there were cases that even um, if there were some um, shipwrecks or um, there were some uh, floods, and the stone was, um, well, sitting uh, maybe not at the bottom of the sea, but definitely below water, that record was still valid. 
So um, the idea of having a um, record, even if it was an oral one, uh, where it was mentioned um, how wealth had been transferred from uh, one person to another, is something that um, it's uh, not uh, entirely new. Of course, um, with the technology that uh, we have right now, we can provide uh, quite an enhanced uh, version of, um, of this idea. So uh, there are several features that make uh, blockchain unique. Um, we talk about distribution, no need to have a central authority that uh, will define what's acceptable or not acceptable. Redundancy, in the sense that uh, all transactions uh, will be um, well, um, available for every participant of the system. Transparency, in the sense that um, all these transactions will be uh, audited uh, or have the possibility of being audited by every participant in the, well, in the blockchain. Immutability, once that uh, records take place, they cannot be uh, undone. And uh, consensus, um, the transactions layer that um, uh, represents uh, all the information the transfers that took place uh, will be validated by uh, all of the members, at least ideally. So um, considering all these features, there are several application domains that can, be can benefit from uh, the usage of uh, blockchain. One would be supply chain, uh, in quite uh, an obvious and popular manner, uh, for uh, tracing uh, raw materials and uh, uh, manufacturing or um, cooking uh, procedures for foodstuffs or uh, manufacturing in general. Uh, for insurance and second-hand markets, uh, like um, vehicle history, uh, how many uh, owners uh, it had, uh, whether it had uh, some significant uh, crash that uh, um, took, uh, impacted uh, the structure of the vehicle, etc. And um, for the case that is important to us, for utilities, uh, anything that is related to uh, electricity and energy, so we can trace the origin of uh, that energy, um, the transactions that uh, took place, uh, what participants uh, benefited from them, and um, overall, how uh, energy is being used uh, in a distributed manner. Let's look into uh, these features uh, a little bit uh, closer. Uh, as far as distribution is concerned, we refer to it as uh, how the addition of uh, new data onto the blockchain and its validation is done by at least a majority of the members that are available, ideally all of them. It may happen that uh, um, doing this validation requires um, a significant amount of computational power, so there are some members that are willing to um, offshore that duty to other um, participants that uh, are more um, able to do this. But uh, in its most orthodox form, the way that uh, it was conceived by Satoshi Nakamoto, this was not exactly um, the case. So uh, in this way, uh, having distributed uh, information, the data is uh, available for uh, everybody, anybody that is uh, participating in the blockchain, but um, this data has to be uh, spread to all the participants. You see that for each of these features, there is a trade-off, like uh, nothing comes uh, as, uh, as a free uh, with, uh, with no disadvantages at all. Um, there are some um, sacrifices that have to be done, uh, especially in terms of um, uh, performance. Uh, it's like, uh, for example, with redundancy, as uh, you can see here, um, if uh, one participant of uh, the blockchain wants to have uh, all the data, all the um, uh, records uh, of the information that was transferred from the very beginning, not only they are in the right uh, to do so, but sometimes it is mandatory that um, they, have, uh, they have that uh, access. So in that way, data availability gets uh, enhanced. Anyone in the system uh, can uh, participate uh, from this data. If, for example, I install a note of uh, Bitcoin, in a, a laptop or in any other kind of device. I could download all the transfers that took place uh, in Bitcoin from the very beginning, from the, from the Genesis uh, block. But, of course, I need some data storage to have uh, all those, transfer to, uh, all those transfers um, saved in um, some part of the system. Um, with all this data that is available from the very beginning uh, by, um, for everybody, uh, you can imagine that transparency is a strong point in, uh, in blockchain. All the transactions records are distributed among the, all the participants. Everyone is uh, fully aware and equally aware of the operations that have uh, taken place. Um, in order to keep this uh, transparency and redundancy, though, um, nodes, uh, participants in the system, have to be uh, updated uh, and informed about uh, any new transaction. So that creates a, let's say, transitory state where all these new transactions have to be propagated among all the participants in the, in the system or in the, in the network. <coughs> Immutability is another uh, very important feature. Uh, once um, new transactions have been validated by uh, the participants that they have been recorded into the blockchain, they cannot be undone. 
uh, they will be a stay there um, basically forever. This has the, this has the advantage of um, making a system very um, trustworthy in terms of uh, auditing uh, what party uh, transferred uh, what kind of resources or um, how information was um, uh, transmitted from one place to another. But uh, it has a disadvantage of um, well not being able to correct any mistake. Uh, if, for example, I want to transfer um, 10 Bitcoin to a user and I uh, miswrite or misspell um, the address that I'm um, transferring those funds, then uh, unfortunately there is nothing I can do about that. I have to rely on the goodwill on, of the other person to transfer them back. If um, they do so, then great. If not, then too bad. And finally, we have to take into account a consensus. Uh, participants, um, at least the majority, but ideally all the participants, have to agree on what has to, uh, what will be considered to be uh, valid. And um, in order to do so, the blockchain has to be the same for uh, everybody. And uh, this uh, consensus um, is uh, effectively uh, dealt with with consensus algorithms. The advantage of this is that um, information, I mean, in a sense, uh, it's like um, in life with, uh, with real people. Uh, consensus is uh, always um, more acceptable and uh, a more um, long-term solution than um, when everybody accepts uh, what um, should be done and uh, the actions that must be taken. But in order to get that agreement among all the people, well, it takes some time. Whereas if uh, there is only one person uh, making decisions, then most likely decisions are made faster, but uh, some people may disagree on the decisions that have been uh, done and uh, that would result in a conflict. So in this case, it's uh, pretty much the same. Uh, by having consensus on um, how the transactions are valid, then um, we uh, get to an agreement on all the participants on uh, how or what is uh, regarded as valid, but it takes time um, to well, get to that uh, agreement uh, in cryptographic terms. So as you can imagine, data transfers in a distributed system are key for its current uh, performance. Uh, so as I was mentioning before, whenever there is a new transaction, all the um, uh, differences or all the changes in uh, status, uh, in the status of the system have to be uh, well, uh, updated and have to be um, um, to dealt with uh, with the maximum um, speed uh, available. Um, data transfers, uh, which uh, we have already referred to as transactions, but I uh, will mention here as transactions again, um, can be gathered in a single unit or block um, in a number uh, according to the specification or the data protocol that is being uh, used. By data protocol, it's not uh, unlikely that we just refer to a cryptocurrency. As far as I remember, in Bitcoin, um, it is um, stated that uh, each of the blocks must have uh, 2,400 uh, transactions. It is like that just because uh, when Bitcoin was uh, designed uh, this way, um, it was decided that it was the most uh, suitable quantity. It's the same with uh, Bitcoin, uh, the uh, famous Bitcoin uh, halvings. So, as you can see uh, here, uh, especially referred to transactions, um, data are going to be uh, interlinked with each other, uh, having a mix of um, current data that I have uh, in one transaction, or if I add uh, all the transactions into a blog, a single block <clears throat> and some data that I'm using um, from uh, the previous transactions, that in this case would be the, the hash, in order to, uh, with that um, uh, data or that hash uh, output that I have from the previous block that I'm using to um, get the hash of my current block, I will daisy chain my current block with the previous block. That's why uh, hash functions are, uh, are very important. Um, there are some features of them that uh, have uh, yet to be um, challenged and uh, from the cryptographical point of view they are uh, of, um, well, of um, great interest. For example, you may be uh, familiar with this. A hash function is basically used to uh, provide a summary or um, uh, output about uh, some message that has been uh, encrypted with, um, well, uh, with uh, some specific number of bits. There are two things that uh, are important for this. If, for example, this is just an online uh, hash, uh, hasher. If I have this text, very simple text, and I hash it, well, there are several hashing algorithms, but let's uh, focus on the ones that are based on the SHA. I'll get these uh, different amounts of data. The, these are the number of, uh, of bits, and each of these characters is an hexadecimal character. So uh, this would be um, 
64 um, characters uh, with uh, four bits uh, each of them. So in the end, I will have 256 uh, bits. And uh, here you can see the SHA-256 uh, uh, output from using this, um, uh, well, hashing this uh, data. And if I hash, yes, pretty much the same data. The only difference is that uh, here, the H is capital, rather than uh, non uh, being like that. And if I create the hash, then you'll see that the data that I have obtained is completely different and apparently unrelated. Like, there is no way that if I get this data, this uh, hash output for hello, I can have uh, guessed that um, this uh, uh, hash data is the same message with a capital H. I mean, there is no human uh, way to, uh, to know it. Um, the other uh, major feature is uh, what I've uh, drawn here. I can use um, hash function to, uh, by having a message A, getting a message B, but there is no um, reverse or um, inverted uh, hash function that I can use. There is no hash uh, power minus one that I can use with, by having B, obtaining back A. Sorry, by having B, obtaining back A. This is a mathematical challenge that uh, at this point is yet to be solved. Maybe in the future it will be uh, solved, but uh, well, this is, uh, there is no tenet with uh, hash. You cannot go back uh, and forth uh, in, at, time in the same, uh, at the same moment. Okay, let's talk now. In the context of that example that you showed where you had hello, mm -hmm. how, how do I understand A and B? So is A hello yeah. and B the... Yeah, so this would be uh, hey, yeah. A would be hello. And B is that expression. And B is, for example, yeah. this expression. So if I take this expression, so, okay. uh, you, you know what I mean, right? Yeah. And there is... So your point is then that you cannot reconstruct hello. That's it. At. Okay. That's it. Okay, uh, let's refer now to the um, sustainable development goals, which is something that uh, I'm sure that um, fortunately um, all of you are uh, quite familiar with. They have been put forward by um, United Nations as literally, according to the, to the source uh, that you can see there, a universal call to uh, action uh, to end poverty, uh, protect the planet, and ensure that by 2030, all people enjoy peace and prosperity. Well. These are uh, very nice uh, objectives. If something they are, mm, well, unfortunately, maybe a little bit uh, too ambitious uh, seeing the current state of the world, but uh, it's worth fighting for them, at least. That's, uh, that's my opinion. With such uh, ambitious goals, any help that we can get um, to uh, well, uh, fulfill these uh, SDGs is, uh, is welcome. And um, in this case, uh, as you're quite aware of, uh, of uh, all this, there are political actions such as research programs and transnational agreements that have been uh, carried out. There are also knowledge and research related uh, actions. I mean, I'm at MIT, so there is very little that I can tell you about that. If something you could tell me about uh, the things that you're doing in uh, natural sciences, uh, mathematics and physics or in co information and communication technologies and social actions um, related to dissemination, uh, education, uh, discussions and uh, debates. Um, uh, how to achieve uh, all these um, um, well, wonderful um, uh, ideas. But what about blockchain? Can blockchain be used uh, for this purpose? Uh, is, uh, is there any real usefulness for blockchain in, this, uh, in uh, achieving these uh, SDGs by 2030? Actually, it is my opinion that, uh, yes, blockchain has a lot of to say um, about this. This is a well, non-rigorous um, chart that I've created, both this slide and the next one with a description of, uh, a short description of the um, SDGs as uh, they have been put forward by United Nations and how uh, blockchain uh, can contribute to, uh, to them. Um, for example, um, for the no poverty uh, SDG, we can use blockchain for uh, accountable transactions and transparent fund spending. For zero hunger, we can get, about, uh, we can get data about food manufacturing and delivery and historical records on um, how uh, food has been um, um, used or uh, how the uh, ingredients that are used for foodstuffs uh, have been um, used, uh, whether um, they have been uh, kept in good conditions, uh, etc. For good health and well-being, uh, we can use a digital uh, chain of medical records, uh, secure registration of uh, prescriptions, uh, etc. For quality education, uh, we can use some uh, resource sharing, 
digitize uh, academic records, such as uh, this, this is one of the many uh, usage of uh, NFTs, and a reduction of bureaucracy that is always very annoying for professors. Um, gender equality uh, can use uh, help from uh, blockchain too by providing um, transparent registry of salaries by gender or age, uh, access to financial tools and economic uh, independence. For clean water sanitation, um, there can be a realization of uh, water resources used, uh, what kind of um, uh, pollutants they may have um, uh, or what chemicals are we used um, for uh, disinfection. For affordable or clean energy, that is uh, quite related to the, um, to the topic of this uh, talk. Uh, there can be a restriction of electricity resources used, um, sharing of electricity costs with participants, peer-to-peer -peer energy uh, transactions this is something that is already uh, quite popular in some parts of the world. Uh, for decent economic growth, uh, accountability of national and foreign uh, funds and aid. For industry innovation and uh, infrastructures, uh, sharing of software technology, source code, uh, you know, sharing of uh, knowledge. Uh, reduced inequalities uh, can make use of blockchain by uh, having uh, distribution of available knowledge, um, assessment on how economic resources are spent. Sustainable uh, cities and communities can make use of blockchain systems of systems um, typical of uh, large uh, urban settlements, um, especially for anything that is related to utilities such as uh, water, uh, electricity, uh, gas, uh, etc. And as you can see here, um, there are many usages that uh, can be uh, well, um, that uh, can um, make. Uh, there are many SDGs that uh, can make use of uh, blockchain, and um, it's something that is some I feel really passionate um, about uh, because um, it's real. Like um, for example, when we talk about climate action, how uh, renewable uh, energies can be integrated and uh, how energy can be traded with uh, the aid of blockchain. That's something that is uh, real. It's already taking place in um, well, many uh, parts of the of the world. And uh, well, there are some other usages as well, like uh, how um, there can be a restriction information and findings about uh, seabed and assessment of resources usage for life below water, um, kind of equivalent usages for life on land, uh, how transparency and common sharing and knowledge on criminal records or civil servants' behavior with regards to corruption can be used for peace, justice, and strong institutions. And of course, uh, how we create uh, partnerships and uh, the alliances to fulfill all these, uh, all these goals. So um, this was uh, kind of short, but uh, intense. Um, if uh, any of you wants uh, to have uh, the slides, uh, I'm sure that we can provide them uh, afterwards. Uh, or if you have a pen drive around here, I guess, uh, I'll just uh, give, them, um, give them to you. So uh, last but not least, I'm going to make uh, an introduction to Smart Grid with the permission of some people that are here that are way, know way better uh, than me about uh, Smart Grids. I have done uh, more significant research than, uh, than in my case. Um, one similarity that the smart grids uh, have with uh, blockchain is that uh, they are defined in a different manners, but there is a similar underlying meaning. Um, here I have a definition about uh, having a um, sophisticated, uh, digitally enhanced uh, power system, as uh, where the use of modern communications and control technologies allows uh, much greater robustness, uh, efficiency, and flexibility that today's, by today's, is meant. 2012, when uh, I added this, uh, where this reference uh, uh, was first published, and power systems. It looks like mumbo jumbo, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm trying to uh, sell my stuff, but it's actually true. Um, we're actually making, uh, integrating, uh, and adapting um, the, let's say, regular power grid um, by um, adding um, renewable uh, energies, uh, renewable. Um, um, energy um, sources um, that are provided by um, um, small uh, sized um, users that uh, not only consume energy but also produce uh, energy and hence uh, they become consumers. And uh, with uh, all these um, contributions, they make possible that um, uh, the power grid itself becomes uh, smarter and uh, more efficient, reliable, sustainable, and resilient. Um, from my point of view, it's something that is really disruptive in terms of uh, energy generation, uh, distribution, and consumption. Um, it uh, implies uh, making use of uh, renewable energy sources in a very small scale and having bi-directional communications where there is no longer just uh, a few um, uh, major actors that are providing energy, but also another, um, well, um, maybe smaller but uh, bigger in numbers uh, that are uh, also producing uh, energy, prosumers, 
and in a decentralized manner, like small size prosumers. This is a very ICT focused uh, structure of a smart grid. Sorry, I'm an ICT person. So mm, I just, uh, I just uh, added this, um, well, just to um, uh, put a little bit, um, well, uh, the light on uh, what is related to the ICT infra infrastructure. So we would have a uh, regular power infrastructure with uh, aggregators, uh, distribution system operator, transmission system operators, and distributed energy resources. And we'll have an ICT infrastructure that uh, is making use, uh, for starters, of uh, advanced metering infra infrastructure and is able to provide uh, applications uh, related to uh, how energy is being, uh, is being consumed. Like I said, this is uh, something that, uh, well, is, uh, like the size is uh, figurative. Uh, it doesn't mean that the applications uh, are more important than uh, DSOs or anything like that. If something is the opposite. There are many uh, interesting and important features of uh, the smart grid here. Uh, for, the, um, for the sake of time, uh, I'm just going to add um, uh, a few of them. But there will be uh, many other are important, such as, uh, as uh, self-healing uh, self uh, capabilities, uh, uh, empowerment of uh, end users, uh, etc. That ones that are like most important uh, from my point of view would be, uh, as I have already mentioned, two-way data communications, where there are bidirectional communication capabilities uh, with real-time uh, information ex uh, exchanges between um, various or significant components of the grid. This is, like I said, not just one main producer uh, either uh, burning um, um, fossil, uh, fossil fuels or um, even um, producing a renewable energy in a centralized manner and provide that energy to end users. Uh, now there are uh, other resources such as uh, solar panels, uh, etc., that are used for, um, in, by end users to provide uh, energy to the grid as well. Uh, usage of advanced uh, metering inf infrastructure, both to uh, measure uh, how energy is going to be uh, is produced or is uh, being consumed, and uh, also to um, inform uh, end users on um, how um, uh, energy uh, consumption is taking place. Uh, automation and control systems, where um, there is an implementation of intelligent uh, uh, automation and control systems that uh, will respond dynamically to changes in the uh, the many features that um, involve uh, power grids, such as uh, energy demand, uh, generation patterns, uh, grid conditions, uh, any kind of uh, unforeseen event, etc., in a very uh, important manner related both to this uh, talk and SDGs in general. The integration of renewable energy sources and uh, how they're used to, uh, well, uh, improve uh, the quantity of power that we have, but most importantly, um, used uh, also to um, uh, help in the um, achievement of sustainable development goals and also in the empowering of end users that now they are um, able to uh, trade and to use um, commodity that they were unable to do 30 or 40 years uh, even 20 years uh, 20 years ago uh, this as always comes with a trade-off uh, with uh, these uh, flows of data that are going uh, from uh, one place uh, to another in bidirectional manners Cybersecurity measures have to be uh, well, uh, implemented. Uh, how we're going to uh, protect identities, uh, how uh, data should not be hacked, uh, especially with regards to energy usage and consumption, and uh, well, uh, the amount of funds that have been allocated for uh, resource um, in terms of energy, etc. Um, this is something that uh, needs to be uh, well, made use of and uh, dealt with. So now, um, this was uh, maybe a little bit long, but you know, there are many topics that we uh, need to uh, consider here. We have blockchain, we have uh, SDGs, we have uh, smart grids. So now, uh, it's the moment that we can uh, use to talk about synergies uh, between um, these three elements. Uh, block uh, blockchain, uh, sustainable development goals, and uh, smart grids. We know already that by decentralizing and adding, uh, adding transparency to the use of electricity, smart grids have the potential they are already doing uh, so to transform the energy sector when combined with blockchain. Blockchain is also decentralized, uh, has bidirectional communications, and it's about um, trading or interchanging information. The smart grid is um, about uh, interchanging um, well, energy, and there is uh, well, uh, some uh, ICT and some uh, software functionalities that are used to uh, make all those uh, transactions smoother. But we can already see that um, 
even though they are quite different, there are some significant similarities that uh, are able to um, combine both the blockchain and the, and the smart grid. By doing this, uh, by um, merging uh, the smart grids and the blockchain, we can also, uh, of course, um, provide um, some framework for sustainable development goals to be fulfilled uh, in an easier manner. Um, like I mentioned, um, you have already uh, seen or you have already uh, have an idea of uh, how by um, incorporating or uh, integrating these uh, renewable energy sources and um, providing um, transactions that will be uh, transparent, uh, redundant and um, secure, uh, then uh, we can provide a framework to um, improve uh, the power grid um, uh, in general and uh, how these technologies combined uh, can uh, address uh, many important aspects uh, of, uh, for energy transition. This is, for example, quite valid uh, and quite visible uh, in the um, automobile industry, how the switch from uh, internal combustion engine uh, or mostly internal combustion engine uh, cars and vehicles to uh, electric uh, hybrid, plug-in hybrid, uh, once uh, it's um, taking its time, is a titanic task. So it's, there are many things to consider, especially uh, with regards to, uh, to the power grid. And um, how by doing this, uh, we can, uh, it's not only a matter of um, uh, making what's uh, good for uh, the planet, the earth uh, that everyone shares, but also how there are new job opportunities and how a new uh, economy based on uh, knowledge can be created with, uh, with this. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to uh, talk about uh, some um, use cases and some possibilities that uh, from my point of view are important um, with regards of um, uh, combining uh, blockchain, the smart grid and uh, uh, directing them or driving them towards uh, sustainable development goals that uh, to the best of my knowledge are based on the reality of things that are currently being, um, well, that are taking place uh, already. First, we have collaborative uh, energy communities. And um, for uh, as far as smart grid is concerned, this becomes uh, very obvious with uh, VPPs, with virtual power plants, where a collection or a federation of small prosumers gather together in order to either uh, share their energy with each other or just uh, go to the, to the markets. Um, in this case, this, uh, the VPPs uh, exist uh, already, or well, they have been uh, there for uh, quite some time. But uh, here with blockchain, we can support uh, transparent and automatic transactions with, uh, within energy communities, uh, fostering trust among the participants that um, well, um, can uh, make use of uh, the resources that some produce and some consume to even out, or as I say here, even as even out, um, even if uh, there, is, uh, some, um, there are some um, uh, partners that are producing uh, very little uh, amount of energy, but that in the end becomes um, well, um, tradable or becomes useful for the participant of the system. If overall there is a net uh, surplus, there is still a possibility of just injecting that power um, to the overall power grid for, uh, for a profit. This is where decentralized energy systems um, come, uh, well, come to, uh, to aid in these uh, aspects and uh, can be used to our uh, advantage. We already know with the smart grids, that um, they enable the integration of renewable energy sources. It's important because they are not, the, I mean, uh, renewable energy sources and decentralized energy systems are not the same, but um, being pragmatic, they tend to be used uh, in an interchangeable manner, mostly because um, the decentralized energy systems that uh, end users can provide to the grid most often uh, are based on renewable energy sources. It's easier to have uh, some solar panels or even an um, uh, um, uh, 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 iron generator uh, installed in a, in a house or in a small uh, household than uh, drilling for oil in uh, your backyard. So um, usually um, they come, uh, the, the centralized energy systems that are added to the power grid, they come in this, uh, as uh, renewable energy systems. So, as I mentioned here, um, blockchain can be used to uh, establish peer-to-peer -peer transactions and uh, allowing to cons the consumers to buy and sell energy both among themselves and to other uh, parts of the, of the power grid. This uh, trading is uh, mostly done with uh, smart contracts, which I think that uh, you're already, uh, well, you know, uh, you know about them. Um, smart contracts uh, come up, uh, 
usually uh, came as um, a software uh, program that is uh, deployed into uh, some um, uh, blockchain-based um, development. Uh, usually it's uh, Ethereum, there are other uh, higher level um, uh, blockchains, where peer-to-peer -peer and bidirectional trade um, is um, written in uh, very specific uh, terms. It's like, uh, at this moment, uh, I will transfer uh, these uh, kilowatt hours of uh, energy from uh, user A to user B at uh, a specific cost. And everything is uh, written as a program, so uh, um, the room for ambiguity is really, really small, and uh, everything is quite transparent. So um, it can be done uh, in a sense that uh, everyone uh, will see uh, what their prices are about. And to an extent, um, it's like uh, going to buy or sell shares. Um, I can see what was uh, the price of the last share that was bought or was sold when uh, uh, offer met uh, demand. And uh, I can uh, use that information in a transparent manner to see uh, how I should um, well, uh, offer energy or how should I buy energy for. So uh, in this case, not only can see the last um, uh, transaction that took place, but also I can see uh, how they took place uh, from a historical uh, point of view, from the very first transaction to the last one. Other uh, aspects that uh, blockchain uh, can benefit, uh, the smart grid can benefit from blockchain and therefore um, aiming the fulfillment of sustainable development goals is efficiency and optimization of the grid and uh, with renewable energy integration. With uh, efficiency and optimization uh, comes, um, at least uh, as far as the smart grid is concerned, um, comes with uh, the interchange of uh, lots of um, data uh, in real time and almost in real time on the, how um, loads uh, are um, consuming energy, how uh, the power flow has been uh, optimized or uh, how it's been uh, balanced. And all these um, uh, transactions or all this uh, data that has been um, uh, circulated among the participants uh, can be uh, also stored as part of um, well, the ledger that is uh, used um, to share uh, among all the participants in the blockchain to provide a tamper-proof uh, recording of uh, these uh, energy transactions. As for the renewable energy integration, we have already talked a little bit uh, about that. Um, smart grids, um, by definition, uh, help uh, a great time to uh, incorporate uh, and to um, add to the power grid uh, small size renewable energy sources. And um, in this case, uh, blockchain uh, can provide uh, help not only by trading this uh, energy and uh, electricity, as we have already seen, but also um, with uh, other, um, let's say, more um, sophisticated resources such as uh, uh, renewable energy certificates or um, uh, carbon uh, credits, uh, as uh, we're going to see uh, right now. Uh, you're probably familiar with the renewable energy certificates. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how it will be um, in in the U.S. These kind of uh, usages in uh, Europe sometimes. Uh, are a little bit uh, controversial due to aspects that uh, we'll see um, one slide uh, after this one. And um, this example that uh, I provide here, these uh, regs are supervised by the EPA, involve that when someone buys uh, these uh, certificates, uh, they're not actually buying the electricity itself, the electricity that was produced in a renewable manner, but rather, um, when this uh, electricity, uh, this renewable, uh, this electricity has been uh, produced by use of renewable energy sources, a certificate is uh, going to be uh, emitted by uh, well, the mm, generators of this energy. The certificate can be uh, purchased, and uh, by purchasing that certificate, uh, the buyer will have the right to claim that a certain amount of electricity has been uh, generated from renewable energy sources and uh, therefore contributing to um, uh, making the system, uh, incentivizing the system to um, uh, use uh, renewable energies. A little bit of an example uh, is something that uh, I, I wrote here. When uh, a producer generates one megawatt hour of uh, energy from a renewable energy source, uh, REC, uh, this, uh, this kind of uh, certificate can be issued, and uh, it's um, issued uh, as a proof that uh, a specific amount of energy that was produced comes from a renewable source. That's where blockchain uh, can step in because uh, we can provide a ledger of um, how this, um, how this uh, energy was produced, 
where, what kind of um, uh, materials were used uh, for it, uh, etc. So when someone uh, buys uh, this uh, rig, they claim that um, they are helping um, the producers of uh, renewable energies to uh, well, en enhance or to uh, incentivize uh, their use, but it doesn't imply that they're going to use that renewable energy. As uh, I mentioned here, even if they consume electricity from the conventional grid, electricity that is uh, generated from fossil fuels, they can still buy that certificate because it's tradable and uh, claim that they're helping to um, well, um, uh, produce renewable energy. That's the aspect that is controversial, that uh, some, uh, well, some companies uh, make use of uh, this kind of resource uh, sometimes just to mask that they're not meeting their um, uh, carbon reduction goals, uh, but still claim that they're trying to help with uh, renewable energies and, and et cetera. So uh, yeah, there is a little bit of a mismatch between uh, these certificates and uh, how they're being uh, they're used. Uh, from a point of view, the intentions are good, but the implementation uh, could, be, uh, could be better. We also talk about uh, grid resilience and uh, reliability, as far as um, smart grid and uh, blockchain are, uh, are involved. Um, it comes clear that uh, if I have um, uh, more uh, producers of uh, energy that are injecting uh, their power into the system, there could be a problem about having too much um, electricity in the power grid itself. But um, it's something that is uh, always uh, better to have uh, in excess that it, by uh, that, uh, well, not having uh, enough of, uh, of it. Um, so in this case, um, by having um, all these uh, small uh, energy uh, producers or consumers, prosumers, uh, merge into the power grid, then we we'll create um, conditions to uh, have uh, a higher um, uh, amount of uh, power outputs and providing more grid resilience and uh, reliability. Um, this is something that, for example, uh, again, with the automobile industry, uh, it becomes really useful just to charge uh, vehicles. Uh, if I am, uh, if I have, um, I mean, it comes uh, as a very simple solution. If uh, uh, I have some uh, renewable energy source uh, at my uh, home, even if it is uh, an apartment, they may be on the roof, and I use it to charge my, uh, my vehicle, then I'm do doing either a limited or a, well, uh, or an insignificant um, usage of the regular power grid that was being used before. Even it's not unusual that um, some cars, um, I think in uh, I think the Hyundai Group cars, uh, I'm not being paid by Hyundai or anything like that. Um, some cars uh, have the um, option to uh, um, inject power to the grid, this uh, vehicle to grid uh, technology. So it can also be used to uh, well, to uh, put back power on uh, my apartment or my house if for whatever reason I need it and the conditions that have been offered um, from the grid to buy it are um, to buy this power are um, unfavorable to me. So um, that um, links uh, this uh, kind of uh, development with uh, access to energy and financial inclusion. Um, by using these smart contracts and by using this um, decentralized um, structure, uh, people in developing countries uh, can purchase energy uh, without having to rely that much on uh, having a bank account or uh, having some um, uh, resources that uh, in developing countries are more or less present in cities but are um, unavailable for people who live in the countryside that sometimes is uh, the majority. That's why uh, we refer to uh, blockchain-based uh, energy purchase uh, systems as something that can be uh, used. This does not imply necessarily that cryptocurrencies will be used. This is something that uh, I, want to, uh, I want to stress. Um, there are regular um, well, um, fiat uh, currencies that can be used. Usually uh, by using the blockchain, they imply that um, well, there is a fee that is going to be paid. But for example, if I wanted to buy something with... Um, with Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency, there are already debit cards and uh, other resources that I can use to um, to buy whatever I whatever I need. Like I said, there is um, always uh, some fee or some um, cost that uh, has to be used because in the end we're uh, making a conversion from cryptocurrency to uh, fiat money, dollars, uh, euros, or whatever. Uh, but um, the solution, the well, the option is uh, there, and it is still decentralized um, decentralized money. 
So using um, cryptocurrencies uh, for these purposes offers great risks, like lack of acceptance of uh, such cryptocurrencies, the volatility uh, that historically they've uh, had throughout this uh, short period of time that uh, they have been uh, traded with, like uh, from 15 years ago and so on. But there are also possibilities that have to be considered. Um, transnational trans uh, transfers are usually really fast because, uh, well, the system works in a less bureaucratic manner and there is no need for central banks with all that it implies. I mean, just this uh, single uh, line here, I think would be enough to have uh, another seminar. So uh, I cannot get uh, more into this, but uh, it's something that is um, um, of, uh, of interest. Paperwork uh, costs can be uh, significantly reduced and um, we can go to the core of the business and um, the transactions layer among the participants is going to be kept uh, anyway. Um, lastly, I would like to, reserve to, uh, to refer to the climate change uh, mitigation and data security and privacy. With uh, climate change uh, mitigation, uh, it's going to be roughly the same that uh, we have seen before with the um, renewable energy um, certificates. In this case, uh, what can be done is that, um, well, we can use uh, carbon credits um, to uh, whenever there is a project that uh, is uh, making use of renewable energies and uh, stops uh, producing some uh, carbon, then uh, that will produce a carbon credit that can be uh, purchased. So here the idea is that um, by using some renewable energy or by taking some action in reducing the carbon uh, footprint that uh, is being um, produced by uh, an entity, I'm able to create uh, carbon credits that can be uh, well, traded. So as it happened before with these um, uh, renewable energy certificates, it's like uh, the devil is in the details, right? Like the intentions are good, like uh, we can use uh, those uh, carbon credits uh, as a way to uh, promote and incentivize renewable energy sources, but they can also be used uh, as an uh, excuse by uh, other companies or uh, other entities or well, uh, other participants that uh, are either unable or unwilling to reduce their uh, carbon emissions, but they have the money to afford uh, this, uh, this kind of uh, credits. Um, so, well, uh, in this case, um, anyway, blockchain can still provide uh, enhancements to uh, how the system is uh, created by having a traceability of credits, uh, where they were purchased, uh, how they were um, interchanged, uh, what project resulted in the, um, their creation, this in sustainable transactions and this decentralized verification and having, again, immutable certification records. As for security, um, there is uh, always the advantage of uh, having blockchain as a decentralized um, system. There is no uh, central uh, certification authority that is uh, going to be uh, um, saying uh, what uh, party can access or cannot access uh, to the system. That's something that it can be created. Uh, in practice, uh, some uh, private blockchains make use of that just to delegate uh, well, the computational uh, uh, power resources are required. But uh, it's something that is not mandatory to, uh, to be done. And uh, in any case, whenever we're um, uh, making uh, energy trades with the smart contracts, security and the conditions that are going to be uh, met upon this trade can also be written as part of the code that will be uh, the smart contract will be uh, containing. So, um, and in any case, uh, besides uh, all these um, transfers with um, blockchain, there's uh, still um, many resources that are uh, well known and uh, well trusted that can be used in the whole of the smart grid. Symmetric and asymmetric cryptography, underlying security uh, layers for uh, data transactions and uh, decentralized verifications and uh, validations. So, as conclusions, just to um, finish with, uh, with these talks. Uh, I believe that uh, synergies between uh, smart grids, uh, blockchain technology and uh, SDGs are transformative and what's important uh, is not just uh, smoke selling, they are real and they can offer a powerful paradigm swift, uh, sh shift um, for sustainable and inclusive energy systems. Smart grids enhance uh, efficiency, integrate uh, rural energy sources and bolster resilience uh, in the system. You can see here that those are um, goals that are um, supposed to be a part of SDG number seven. Blockchain uh, uh, comes as a nice addition to all this by ensuring the transparent and secure transactions, uh, making the decentralized uh, energy system uh, easier and supporting uh, financial inclusion uh, with regards to these kind of trades. 
uh, contributing in this way to SDG number nine. And uh, together, uh, they can offer a decentralized, uh, resilient and efficient energy ecosystem that uh, will address uh, climate change. Again, this is uh, SDG number 13 through integration of renewable energy sources and by promoting transparency, accessibility and collaboration. These technologies, again, it's uh, my, my opinion, my belief that they will advance uh, SDGs uh, in their uh, fulfillment in the numbers that you can see um, here and uh, well, that they provide an overall uh, improvement, uh, not only from the SDG uh, point of view, but also from the um, knowledge uh, economy. So uh, that's uh, all um, that I had to say in this uh, time span. As I mentioned here, thank you very much for your attention and your attendance as well. Uh, well, in case that uh, you want to uh, uh, send me an email about this presentation or any other um, aspect, you can see uh, here the Technical University of uh, Madrid email that I use. And uh, well, that's all that I had to say um, from my side. So if you want to uh, engage into a discussion or um, uh, some um, debate uh, with questions and answers, I'm more than uh, open to that. Thank you very much. Yeah.